This is the second in our two-part series on the good and bad of electric vehicles. The first article, What's Wrong with Electric Vehicles? 12 Myths and Two Truths, is available in the top right-hand corner. In this article, we'll explore the many hidden advantages of electric vehicles. Of course, EVs have some advantages over internal combustion engines, or ICE as they're called, you know, gas and diesel, that everybody talks about, like they're quieter and faster, they're a way cool new toy. But there are a whole pile of really interesting advantages to electric vehicles that most people just don't consider. Number one, preheated or cooled, if you were to let a gas engine car idle inside your garage and let it warm up, it would be filling that garage with poisonous gases. Not a good idea. Each of the four EVs and plug-in electrics that I've owned have allowed me to set the time that I expect to leave in the morning and have the vehicle automatically turn on to heat the cabin or cool the cabin for that matter while it's in the garage five or ten minutes before I actually plan to leave so it's toasty warm or chilly cold for me. Even better because heaters in EVs are electric they start warming up the car within seconds. We'd like to interject for just 10 seconds to ask you to click like if this is the kind of thing that you like. It really helps us with the Google algorithm and if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. Thanks, back to the show. Number two, electric vehicles as power backup for your house. Now this is the only item on our list that isn't here today in broad release. This is something that's coming in future electric vehicles, but imminent future. And we decided to include it because of the problems we're seeing with the power grid in the Southern United States like Texas. So let's get through it. Few current generation electric vehicles have 110 volt outlets or 234 European and Asian friends that you could use as a plug to support your house. But Ford, Rivian and other manufacturers will be changing that in the next year. Given the high profile power failures in Texas, we're sure that nearly all EV companies will be adding that feature to their electric vehicles. It's estimated that you can run the critical components of your house, you know, space heaters, fridges, things like that, uh, from a typical uh, EV for between two to five days, depending on how large the battery is and what you're drawing. This type of backup is worth thousands of dollars and will affect the UPS and backup power system makers like Generac. Number three, EVs are just better in the snow. That's right, because EVs have a substantial weight of their batteries and that weight is evenly distributed between all of the wheels and because EVs always have the next generation of onboard computers that perform better predictive traction control, they're just better. In the top right hand corner, we're going to put a link to me driving a two wheel drive Tesla in serious snow, like a nasty uh, snowstorm. Number four, electric vehicles get executive parking. If you don't have an EV, you no doubt have noticed that electric vehicle parking, often with charging, is right at the front doors of many buildings. My kid's elementary school has five chargers at the front door and my office has chargers on the top level of the parkade. Executive parking is a very nice benefit of EVs today. Number five, no more gas stations. So look, you already know that with an EV you don't buy gas and that'll save you between $1,500 to $3,000 or more a year depending on what type of vehicle you drive today. What you may not have thought of are the other benefits from avoiding gas stations. Most notably, time, cold, and panic. So as far as time goes, look, it takes about five minutes to fill up your car. And that doesn't include the time it takes to get there or to wait in line. So if we average 10 minutes per week traveling to get gas and filling up, that's about nine hours of your life that you just lost. Not having to fill up the tank every week and freezing your hands off in the winter is certainly a nice feature. And the last thing here is panic. Have you ever noticed that it always seems that you're short of gas whenever you're in a hurry? But because electric vehicles are nearly always full because they're charged at home or the office, that's just not an issue anymore. Number six, free green electricity at home. One of the arguments against EVs is that the sources of energy in your local area could be coal. And while it's still much better than gasoline, it's terrible for the environment. What many people do not know is that coal-fired electric power generation has been collapsing over the last decade. Also, almost nobody talks about the fact that between a third and a half of electric vehicle owners have solar panels at their house. In Calgary, where I live, 80% of the electricity comes from natural gas and 20% from wind. But I get a lot of my juice from my solar panels. Number seven, no more engine warm-up idling. Unless you like hearing metal on metal and the screaming of fan belts, it's a bad idea to drive a gas or diesel engine in cold weather without letting it idle for a few minutes to warm up. 
In an EV, no moving parts, just get in and go. Number eight, total cost of ownership. Buying an electric vehicle today costs more upfront, but in the echo chamber that is the electric vehicle world, everybody knows that electric vehicles cost less in, with a total cost of ownership. But that just hasn't resonated with average consumers yet. There are a pile of YouTube channels and articles, including some of ours, that explain the total cost of ownership is less because there's virtually no maintenance. You have virtually no downtime. You don't require expensive gas or diesel, and you even have lower insurance rates. Number nine, electric vehicles have next gen tech. Nearly all electric vehicles come with next generation cool technology. This is one of the ways EV manufacturers justify that higher upfront purchase price. Even my base Tesla Model 3 comes with autopilot, automatic high beams, rain sensing wipers, and completely keyless entry and ignition. And I mean completely keyless, not even a fob required. Sure, it won't change lanes or take off ramps for me, like the full autopilot, but the base autopilot keeps the car centered in lane, speeds up and slows down to match other drivers, which is all I need for 90% of my highway driving. And it's not limited to Tesla. Everybody does this. The 2022 Chevy Bolt will have Cadillac Super Cruise. Number 10, EVs have almost no maintenance. Other than windshields, tires, and washer fluid, there's almost nothing to wear out on an electric vehicle. Brakes are something people bring up all the time, and nope, they're not going to wear out because electric vehicles all use regeneration to slow the vehicle down, which basically recaptures that kinetic energy using the electric system rather than the friction brakes. A gas or diesel engine can have up to 2,000 parts, while an electric vehicle has 18 moving parts. Think about all that time, money, and effort, and the fear saved from not having the fan belt squeak, the oils leak, the rad hoses that fail, and performing all of those annoying oil changes. Number 11, electric vehicles have longer warranties. Look, it's just a fact. Virtually all have an eight year minimum warranty in all of the EV components. You just can't get that with a standard gas or diesel vehicle. These things are built to last. Number 12, EVs have more cabin space. All wheel drive and rear wheel drive gas powered vehicles have their engine in the front and they need to consume a substantial amount of cabin space to accommodate that drive shaft that connects the rear of the vehicle. That's that bump you have going down the center of your car. Electric vehicles just have to run wires to get four wheel drive or rear wheel drive. So the drive shaft tunnel doesn't exist and EV owners as a result get a notable amount of additional legroom inside the cabin. Number 13, EVs are more reliable. It's completely unfair to say electric vehicles never break down, but I can tell you after six years of owning EVs and plug-in hybrids, I have never had an EV failure, and I've never met anyone who did. As we said, EVs have about 30% fewer parts in total, but the parts that are missing are the ones that fail. Head gaskets, spark plugs, piston rings, alternator belts, all of those things are designed to fail at some point. EVs just don't have those parts. On to number 14, electric vehicles are easier to repair. Yeah, same old story here. Because electric vehicles are pretty much all being built in the same skateboard and top hat uh, concept, which you can see here, their parts are easily accessible. I read a few weeks ago that under perfect conditions, it takes a Tesla mechanic only 20 minutes to remove and replace an electric motor. But while I can't say that is a fact, it stands to reason. How long is it gonna take you to change your motor in your Jeep Wrangler or your BMW 3 Series? All right, number 15. EVs will have a longer life. Look, EVs have not been around long enough to know for sure. But nearly all analysts think that because EVs have so few moving parts, and those parts are easy to change out, that electric vehicles will last between 25 and 100% longer, on average, than gas engine vehicles. The flip side of that, like all vehicles, is that they don't get better with age. In the case of EVs, the number of miles you can store on a battery deteriorates over time. So for instance, my 300 mile, 400 kilometer Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus will likely provide only half of that driving distance in about 10 years. But that doesn't bother me because I only need about 30 miles a day to get to work and back. If I kept my Model 3 for 10 years, it would be my exclusive city car. It would still be way more than I actually need and it would still look great and it would still smell great. Nothing would be burning or leaking or dripping. All right, now on to the esoteric section of why EVs are better. Number 16, dictators. You think, wow, really digging deep in the prize bucket here. No, think about it. Many dictatorships from Russia to Saudi Arabia to Venezuela are propped up by oil revenues. Without those revenues to pay for the social programs, to pay for the military, and to oppress the citizens, those citizens will rise up and overthrow their dictators. 
declining economic conditions in Russia. I think that the sanctions don't matter that much, but I think at the heart of that is really oil revenue. And uh, the sooner the technological revolution happens, that will send the oil price in a knockdown for uh, for years. Uh, that will be the ultimate blow. Number 17, uncalculated greenhouse gas reductions. When comparing ICE vehicles, you know, gas and diesel, to electric vehicles, it's common for EV critics to search at every tiny source of GHGs, greenhouse gases, that could be possibly attributed to electric vehicles. We recently produced a video, which we'll put in the top right hand corner, so you can click and watch it now if you want, explaining that EVs are in fact substantially better for the environment than gas or diesel vehicles after two and a half, three years. But those calculations do not take into account all of the tiny sources of GHGs that can be solidly attributed to gas-powered vehicles, like how much CO2 gas stations and their buildings produce from heating and their electrical usage. What about the volume of greenhouse gases produced by the gas tanker trucks required to fill those gas stations up? And what about the amount of greenhouse gases and garbage produced by the manufacturing, packaging, and distribution of all those disposable parts? You know, like oil filters, fan belts, air filters, and the oil itself. Number 18. Electric vehicles provide public health benefits. Outdoor pollution kills 4.2 million people prematurely, according to the World Health Organization. Tailpipe emissions from vehicles account for 11% of those early deaths, which is about 400,000 in 2015. This is significant in all urban centers. Just look at these photos of major urban centers during COVID and before COVID, and you'll see that this is no joke. And number 19, innovation forces innovation. The drive to make EVs better is relentless, and companies that are competing with never before seen levels of investment are going to continue that. Tesla fanboys will say that Tesla is five years ahead of everyone else. And while that's likely true for some important components, General Motors is spending $27 billion and Ford just doubled their investment to $29 billion in electric vehicles and autonomy by 2025. That kind of competition moves the entire market. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Sure, there are issues with electric vehicles, but most of them are in the realm of perception rather than reality, as we explained in our other article and video. However, there are a few important use cases in which EVs don't compete. If you own only one vehicle and have frequent long distance drives off of major highways, if you don't have the upfront purchase money, or if you live in an apartment building and can't charge up at home or office, an electric vehicle probably isn't the best choice for you. However, for nearly everyone else, it is clear that electric vehicles provide serious advantages to the internal combustion engine vehicles we drive today. To deny that is just to deny that the sun's coming up in the morning. By the mid-2020s, the upfront purchase price of EVs will match that of ICE vehicles, and by the end of the decade, most apartments and most off-the-beaten-path roads will have proper, fast DC chargers ready to take care of those odd use cases. EVs are coming, and if you're a car person, or you're politically concerned, or environmentally minded, wow, that's a very good thing. And because electric vehicles hold their resale value now at least as good as gas and diesel vehicles, there's very little point in most people delaying their purchase. If you're going to buy a new or used vehicle in the next couple of years, you'd be silly to not seriously consider electric vehicles. I ask you to click like if this is the kind of thing that you like. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. Thanks.